success in life. So upon many requests, I am making my full sleep guide, science backed, studies backed. We're going to give you individual tips that you can implement today to improve the quality of your sleep. I don't want to waste any of your time. So let's get into it. Let's first say that just because you are sleeping eight to nine hours or good, getting a good amount of sleep, that does not mean you're getting high quality sleep. High quality sleep is just as important as the duration you sleep. Energized after waking up the next day. So first, let's get, what are the main tools? The main tools are light and darkness, temperature, exercise, supplements, and I'll give a few individual tools that don't classify in any category, but I want to break those things down first. No, because I want you to truly know this applies to everyone and it is important. So first, it's going to increase your testosterone. Sleep is the biggest factor in testosterone. And in addition, I'm going to give a few things that are going to help reduce cortisol, which is going to make you produce even more testosterone in your sleep. Second is it's going to improve your central nervous system. Not only does your central nervous system help you not get sick, but it also is going to help you push much harder in workouts because that's your phrenic nerve is what's responsible for sending signals to individual muscles in your body where to reducing your stress. So this is going to make you a much more successful entrepreneur or whatever you're doing. You're going to get twice as much done if you have quality sleep because of an improved CNS recovery. And then second, you're gonna have better cognition. That being said, don't wake up early. This is what the low testosterone entrepreneurs are telling you, the people who don't really know what they're talking about. Now, I'm not saying don't wake up at an early time. I'm saying don't cut your sleep to wake up earlier. Plan out your sleep so that you end up waking up at an early time while getting your full amount of sleep. First, I want to break down light, but I'm going to briefly tell you the system that controls all these timings in your body. That system is your circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm, I've spoken about many times, that's what we're trying to optimize. Circadian rhythm controls the release of melatonin in your body, so you get sleepy, and the spike of cortisol to wake you up in clock. No light is good for our circadian clock. Not just blue light, any light that is bright could impact it. Even red light, if you have it bright enough, it will impact it. With that being said, the reason red light is advised is because more often, red light has a lower level of looms. Lower lights are better than ceiling lights. Your, the bottom of your eyes, which see the ceiling, are much more sensitive to light. So having a lower lamp or something like that is much better than having your light on the ceiling dimmed if you can do that. Not all the tips that I give you in this guide I necessarily use, but I want to present you with all the information so you could build your own routine to optimize your sleep from a candle of that light. And that is seeing the sun at sunset. The wavelength of the sun when it's setting actually is gonna signal to your brain and your body Tell it what time it is and tell it to start getting prepared to shut down for sleep. Blockers can help slightly, but as I said earlier, blue light isn't the only source that's going to offset your circadian rhythm, so don't rely on them. They don't work that well, but they may have some effect. My final point, it may seem obvious, but when you're asleep, the light still matters. It's still going to impact the quality of your sleep, so you want to make your room feel like a cave when you're sleeping. Eye masks do work, but you have to be sleeping in a much cooler temperature or else it's gonna trap heat in your body. Now let's get into temperature. The temperature of your body peaks midday and is at its lowest around two hours before you wake up. Now what this means is that when you fall asleep, your body needs to cool down by one to two degrees. So we don't want anything to be heating up our body. And because of this, we want to make our room around three degrees cooler than it is before we fall asleep. That way it assists with this process. Some people say they can't sleep in a cold environment. And what I'm gonna say to that is blankets are a great tool. And let me explain why. 
Blankets are a great tool because they could keep your body warm without changing the temperature of your environment. When you stick your foot or hands out of your blanket, that's because your hands and feet absorb a lot of the temperature of the outside air. So what you're actually doing is bringing in the cool air to lower your body temperature. So when you're under blankets, you could keep your body at the temperature at once and then your body's naturally gonna put a hand or a foot outside of the blanket to lower its temperature. With that being said, don't wear socks when you're sleeping because it's gonna mitigate your feet's ability to absorb in this cool air into your body to lower its body temperature. If you cannot lower the temperature of your room, the second best way to lower your body's temperature is by briefly putting your hands and feet in cold water. Have no more than 100 milligrams of caffeine after 4 p.m. This is because caffeine is an adenosine antagonist, so it's going to prevent adenosine from working in your body, which puts you to sleep. And then second, caffeine slightly heats up your body, so it's also going to go against this process. Most of you know I'm a fan of cold showers, and there's a reason I take my cold showers in the morning and then take my actual shower warm, not hot for other reasons, but a warm shower later on in the day. This is because when you take a warm shower, it's going to force your body to cool down afterwards. And as we said earlier, this cooling down is going to help you fall asleep. If you take a cold shower, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to force your body to heat up afterwards. And that's one of the reasons I take it in the morning, because when your body's heating up afterwards, it's setting your circadian rhythm to get used to waking up at that time. Working out past four delays your circadian clock for the same reason. Often when you work out, you probably notice afterwards that you're extremely hot, Wherever you go, it seems like the environment is up 10 degrees. Now this extreme increase in heat is gonna make falling asleep earlier much harder, but if you do have to work out later than four, just make sure you're doing a lot of my advice to assist with this temperature drop when you go to bed. Now real quick, I'm gonna list the supplements that support sleep. And just because I list these supplements doesn't mean you need to take them. If you have high quality, good sleep, implementing the other stuff. The other stuff is more important. The processes in your bodies need to be done, but this stuff will assist with the quality of your sleep. So if you already done everything else I've told you, then go ahead and start taking these supplements. You don't need them, but they do help. The first one is 145 milligrams of magnesium threonate, 50 milligrams of apigenin, 100 to 400 milligrams of theanine. Now this makes your dreams very vivid and you could get it from green tea. That's where I get mine from. It's quite easy to get into your body. So I just wanna present that. Don't take melatonin, especially if you are in puberty. Melatonin stunts your puberty. And for anybody not in puberty, it impacts your androgen and estrogen systems in a negative way. If you wake up in the middle of the night a lot, myonositol is a great supplement, around 900 milligrams. It's gonna make it so you could fall asleep, fall back asleep easier. Now I'm gonna start firing off some simple changes you can make. They're pretty brief points, so only a few of them. I'm gonna go too in depth. First is NSDR. NSDR is a form of meditation that puts your mind in a state ready to sleep. So if you do this before bed, it's going to improve your ability to fall asleep. I'll have a link in my bio to a YouTube video that you can use to do NSDR. Some of you may be like me and you don't like really big bulky pillows. You like the smaller pillows that are lower and closer to your bed. There's actually a reason for this and there's a reason to actually go the opposite direction and not only have a small pillow by your head, to also have a pillow elevating your feet. This assists with a process in your brain. I forgot what it's called, but basically the process is gonna make you wake up with less brain fog and make your brain more effective in the mornings. If you get acid reflex though, you want to do the opposite 
elevate your head more and it'll prevent the acid reflux. The best fix for sleep apnea is actually learning to breathe properly while you sleep. Now you may be wondering, how do you do this? You do this by using medical tape over your mouth to block you from breathing through your mouth in your sleep. A big sign you need this is if you're snoring, this will likely fix your snoring. And what is what you're doing is forcing yourself to breathe through your nose all night. A lot of people's breathing patterns change when they fall asleep. So even if you breathe through your nose throughout the day, you may not breathe through your nose at night. And if in general you have bad breathing patterns, the best way to improve your breathing pattern is by doing box breathing consistently. You need to be breathing slowly, calmly, taking pauses between breaths. It's important to have a consistent time that you wake up, but no matter who you are, there will always be those days where you do stay up late. When you do stay up late, there are a few things we want to do to make sure it doesn't impact us too much. The first one of those things is give yourself plus or minus an hour on your normal wake up time. So say your normal wake up time is six o'clock, you go to bed at 10 to 11 normally. Th tonight, you don't go to bed until one o'clock. So normally you would think, hmm, I'm, I still need eight hours of sleep. I'm gonna wake up at nine. No, the latest you could wake up then is seven o'clock because that's plus an hour over your normal time and we don't want to detriment our quality of sleep in the future. Not only this, but sleeping past this time, we won't get any quality sleep, so it won't actually be resting our body. I never take naps, but a great tool to fix this if you are extremely tired is a nap later in the day. I've heard they are great when used in the right way, so make sure you research how to properly nap before you go ahead and take naps on these days. You also don't want to ingest caffeine or eat within 120 minutes of waking up on these days because this will offset your circadian rhythm so it will screw up your future sleep. Now let's look at the opposite. There will be days where you have to wake up extremely early. Your temperature minimum is two hours before you wake up. If you wake up before this temperature minimum occurs, then what you're gonna do actually is delay your circadian rhythm. So that night you're gonna want to go to bed later and the next day you're gonna want to wake up later. So to avoid screwing this up, the maximum jump we want to make backwards is an hour and a half. So if your normal wake up time is six o'clock, then you don't wanna wake up any time before four o'clock. Say you need to wake up at three o'clock then you're gonna make two hour and a half jumps consecutive days. So the next day, you're gonna wake up at 4.30. And then the day after that, you can wake up at three because you're not jumping backwards two or more hours. Weighted blankets are also great for falling asleep. It increases your levels of melatonin and it's gonna calm your nervous system. So you won't wake up with that fight or flight response, like anxiety sort of feeling in the middle of the night, you're gonna be much more calm when you're sleeping. You're not gonna have as wild dreams that are gonna be waking you up. It promotes very normal cortisol levels. At certain times, cortisol is good, but what this does is make your cortisol levels more normal, what they should be, and it's best for high stress individuals who do get a lot of anxiety. Reduce your noise as much as possible too. No, not even white noise. You don't want any noise when you're sleeping because what noise does is it impacts your sleep cycles. You're gonna get less REM sleep and your cycles are gonna be screwed up. So you're gonna have lower quality of sleep. Plan out a time in the morning to wake up where you just simply have too much time in the morning. If you have too much time, you're not gonna wake up because you have that anxiety of being late. Your body is gonna rest as much as it needs rest because you're giving it the time. If you have to constantly wake up to piss in the middle of the night, then you need to strengthen your pelvic floor. This is gonna allow you to hold the piss longer and not have to wake up in the middle of the night. 
Don't do high dopamine activities before you're falling asleep. This is going to make your brain hyperactive and start thinking about things, start getting excited about things, start getting adrenaline going when you're trying to sleep. It's counterintuitive, anything that releases dopamine to your brain. So things like TikTok, gaming, and even texting that girl. Come on, bro. We know it's a dopamine hit. But if you are like how I was for a while, you would have the same excuse of, well, man, if I'm not doing something with dopamine, there's nothing to do right before I'm going to bed. What am I supposed to do? And real quick, I'm going to list off a few good things to do. Reading a book, great. I don't do it because I find it even reading a book gets my mind thinking and racing and start start analyzing things. So I don't like reading a book before bed, but you could also listen to an educational podcast, some something that you learn from that doesn't give you a dopamine hit. If it's genuinely educational, then you will get sleepy or tired when you listen to it. And then finally is journaling. Journaling is something I like doing often. Just write down, start analyzing yourself. This gets all the thoughts out of your head and you'd be surprised how in depth you could analyze yourself. Start a cycle at night. Ask yourself one question about yourself. Why do I do this? And then you're gonna write an answer. Stare at that answer for a second. It's gonna become this tree of thoughts and you're gonna discover some interesting things. Now we got starchy carbohydrates. Starchy carbohydrates, we want to have for dinner. I'm not promoting them. I'm just saying if you're having carbs, have them for dinner because what this is going to do is going to raise your serotonin levels, which helps reduce your cortisol, and it's going to help you put your body in the state for sleep. Some examples of starchy foods that are good are rice and potatoes. Now be ready for it. If you've implemented most of these things properly, then when you're going to wake up, you're going to be in a much better mood. Somebody's going to say hi, and rather than getting pissed off that you have to respond to them, you're going to be happy, and you're going to be in a good mood. You're going to be productive towards your morning routine, and you're going to be a much better individual. I really hope you understand how important it is that you follow some of this advice. It will quite literally change your life and if you have if you want to boost the algorithm for any reason go ahead comment the next morning how you are feeling how following this advice made you feel don't hesitate implement this stuff tonight there will always be an excuse perspicacity is our grindstone for success we are lifelong learners let it